Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about simple interest. We have a simple interest formula there that we need to use to in order to solve all of these problems. So let's start with taking a look at what each of the variables mean. So I stands for interest. And we're talking about interest. There's two kinds of interest, the amount of money that we earn or the amount of money that we pay over time. And to figure that out, we have to have an amount of money we start with, which we call the principal. The principal is the amount of money that we borrow or the amount that we invest. Then we have R, which stands for rate. And rate is the percentage of the principal to be paid. And in order to use this in our formula, we need to make sure that we convert this to a decimal. So if we do not convert this to a decimal, we can't really do any math with it. It's usually shown as a percent, and we need to make sure that we convert it to a decimal whenever we want to use it in our formula. And finally, our last variable there is T, which stands for time, and the length of the loan or the investment calculated in years. So it's very important that if we get any problems that are listed in months, that we convert them to, that we convert them to years first before completing our problem. Let's go ahead and take a look at example A. So here we are at example A and it says find the interest. So it says Rachel borrows $415 for three and a half years at a 2.3% interest. How much interest will she have to pay? So the first thing we need to do, since we know we're going to be using our formula, I equals P times R times T, so we need to figure out which things we have so we know which variable we're looking for. That's very important. So Rachel borrows $415. So that's the amount of money she's going to start with. So that's going to be our principal. For three and a half years, so since we're talking about years, that's going to be time. And at 2.3% interest, that's going to be the rate. So even though it says the word interest, it's talking about the rate at which we're going to be borrowing, which is at 2.3%. So we know that's our R. So now we need to take a look at our formula. So writing our formula in here, I equals P times R times T, we're going to substitute in the variables that we have. So we know our, we don't know I because we can see we have principal, time, and rate. So we don't want to know what our interest is, so we're going to leave that blank as just I. We do know our principal is going to be $415. Now, it's very important that we take a look at our rate here being 2.3%. We need to change that to a decimal in order to use it in our formula. So since we have 2.3%, we're going to move our decimal two places to the left. When we do that, we end up with 0 0.023. So we're going to substitute that in our formula, 0, 2, 3. And then our final thing is time. We've got that at three and a half. So we're going to put that in as 3.5 because that's three and a half. Then we're going to just multiply all these together. We don't have to do anything fancy. So we can take our calculator out if we want. That might be helpful to us. So we're going to plug in all of our numbers using our parentheses. So in this case, we're going to take our parentheses. And we're going to put in our $415 since that's our principal. Then we'll go next to it. We'll put our parentheses for our 0.023. And then we'll put another set of parentheses for our 3.5. And if we do that, we'll see that it will multiply it for us. We won't have to do any of the calculations. We end up with 33.4075. Now it is very important to notice there that we have four decimal points. Because in our system of money, we don't have four decimal points. We only have two. So we're going to have to do some rounding. So let's get this out of our way. And we're going to go ahead and write down the interest that we found. So we found that our interest was 33.4075. And as we talked about, we don't have four numbers in our system of money. We only have two. So we're going to need to round to our hundredths place. So we're going to find our place, look next door, five or greater, add one more. So our final answer is our interest is $33.41. Now it's very important that we use a label of money here because anytime we have a word problem, we need to have a word answer. Now let's go ahead and take a look at example B. Now here at example B, it says find the missing amount. So it says Leonard invests $3,600 at 4% interest. How long will it take him to earn $1,152 in interest? So the first thing we need to do is go through our problem and find the pieces that we have. So it says Leonard invests $3,600. So since he's investing that, that's the amount of money we're going to start with. That's our principal. At 4% interest, so we know we're talking about our rate because it has a percentage there. How long will it take him to earn 
$1,152 in interest. So now we know that's another amount of money and it's talking about in interest, so we know that's the interest. So if we write out our formula, we'll see that we're mi not missing interest this time. We know what the interest is. So our formula of I equals P times R times T, we can substitute in our interest as $1,152. We know our principal is going to be $3,600. We know our rate is 4%, but again, our 4% needs to be turned to a decimal. So we're going to move our decimal two places to the left. So 1, 2. It's going to give us 0 0.04 for our interest, so 0 0.04. But we don't know our time, so we're going to leave that as the variable t, because we don't know what that is. Now, in order to solve this problem, we're going to have to use our equation solving skills in order to get this done. So let's take a look at our calculator to see the things that we can multiply. Since we have to multiply everything in the right side of our equation, the only things we can multiply is 3600 times 0 0.04 and then multiply that times t. So let's bring out our calculator so that we can do the 3600 times our 0 0.04. So we're going to type in 3600 times 0 0.04 since we know that's going to be our amount and we're going to get 144. So let's remember that 144. But we don't just have 144. We have 144 times t and we're just going to write that as 144 t. Because remember we don't need to put the multiplication symbol sign there between a variable and the number. We'll bring down our 1152 and now we've got ourselves a one-step equation. So we're going to draw a wall on both sides of our equation. We're going to divide both sides by 144. Divide this side by 144. These are going to cancel. Bring down my t. And then 1,152 divided by 144 is 8. So we have t equals 8. But again, I have a word problem. So I need a word answer. So I need to write that t, or time in this case, is equal to 8 years. So in other words, does my, does my equation here make sense? Leonard invests $3,600 at 4% interest. How long will it take him to earn $1,152 in interest? Eight years. I know that's a long time, but he's only or earning 4% interest. Now let's go ahead and take a look at example C. So here we are at example C, and it says find the missing total amount. So Michael borrowed $830 at 6% for two and a half years. What is the total amount that Michael must pay back? So again, the first thing we need to do is go through our word problem and figure out what things we have. So he borrowed $830, so that's what he started with, so we know that's our principal. 6%, so we know that's going to be our rate, since it's got a percent symbol. And two and a half years indicates to us that this is time. So no fancy boxes here, because we didn't really want to draw them every single time, but we still need to identify everything that we're doing. So what is the total amount that Michael must pay? Well, let's write down our formula. So we know that our formula every single time for this is I equals P times R times T. So interest equals principal times rate times time. And we have the P, the R, and the T. So lucky for us, we're going to not know what our I is in this particular case, but we are going to know that our principal is $830. We know that 6% we need to turn to a decimal. So we've got our 6% up here. We're going to move our decimal place one, two places to the right. And we know we're going to end up with 0 0.06. And then our two and a half years, we need to write as 2.5 for a half. Then again, we're going to just pull our calculator out and we can put all those numbers in there together. And if we do that, we can end up getting it right multiplied for us. We could do multiplication symbols in between. But if we type 830 and we take that to our next parentheses and we put 0 0.06. And then our final parentheses, we have 2.5. And we close that parentheses. We can see that it will multiply us together for $124.50 since we're talking about money. So let's remember that. Get that out of our way. So we know that our interest here, we just talked about, is $124.5. But since it's money, we're going to say 50 cents. So we found our interest. But that's not what the problem asks us, right? The problem asks us, what is the total amount that Michael must pay back? So he's not going to pay back just the $124.50 because he borrowed $830 to begin with. So in order to figure out the total amount of money that he needs to pay back, we need to start with the $830 that he borrowed to begin with, 
plus the $124.50 that he borrowed in interest. When we add those two together, that's when we can figure out what his total amount is. So again, we could take out our calculator or we can just do it right in our head. And if we add those two together, $830 plus $124.50 should give us $954.50. And again, don't forget to add our dollar sign because this is a word problem. So we need a word answer. And that's the total amount of money he needs to pay back. That brings us to the end of this set of notes and the end of this video. So if you like this video, go ahead and throw us a thumbs up. If you love this video, go ahead and throw us a sub. And we will catch you in the next one.